So hello again everyone. Uh, it has been a while as always, uh, but uh, we're ready to continue to write uh, our social network and uh, of course it will be written in Go and uh, in this episode I will try to uh, write a test for our uh, social network at least uh, for its protocol and then uh, try to refactor uh, the protocol part in uh, uh, Go side uh, to make it uh, less painful and to make it uh, much easier to extend and to use. Sorry. So let's begin. So first we would like, uh, we would need to uh, ensure that everything is running and I have already done that um, and uh, the first thing that I would do is to add a new flag <coughs> it would be bull uh, bull flag uh, and uh, uh, it it will be done in uh, a little bit unusual way. It will. Uh, mm, I will not do the uh, actual test. It will not be a unit test. It will be a test for our protocol, and uh, we will then think uh, about ways to uh, make our application unit testable as well. But for now, we will make a functional test that would uh, test uh, basic things that everything works. So, okay, so um, it would be test mode, it would be false by default, and uh, uh, it will be something like do self test. <coughs> Sorry, and we'll have to use other config file as well uh, because it will not be able to bind to a specified port. So MySQL and memcache will be the same, um, even though for test purposes we could use uh, something different from the usual. Uh, so, so from the production database and yeah mm, it makes sense to do this so we'll uh, introduce the test mode uh, flag and uh, everything will be the same except uh, for the fact that we will also need to uh, uh, run the web server in a separate go routine and uh, the test itself would be in main so that uh, when the test finishes we will exit um, so it would be something like uh, go uh, and um, uh, I will use a trick that uh, receive a new channel always blocks so it would be something like uh, a new channel so we will just uh, do something like this if test mode then uh, we'll obviously write our test and then otherwise it will be a new channel um, doesn't matter what it will be and it's not an error uh, that we receive on the new channel. It's uh, just it's just a easy way to do this. And so, uh, and otherwise we would call something like run test. <coughs> and uh, run test would uh, first sleep for like a second, uh, so that the web server is. Uh, uh, actually run 
And for now, we'll just um, ensure that everything works. So let's try. Mm. It has been rebuilt, probably. So it's a social network. Uh, oh, yeah. So we'll start the same binary, but uh, specify the different config file. And it would be a config test. Um, and then it would be like test mode. I don't see it working, so something must be wrong. Okay, so it's name test mode. Okay, so let's print then uh, the value of test mode. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's true. So ah. Uh, are we getting here then? Sorry, uh, I keep forgetting that terminal is in the same uh, in the same window. So actually, here is where we block, and this is and this is exactly why. So. Uh, uh, the arguments are evaluated um, when we're doing the call, but uh, that is not what we need. So we will wrap into uh, an anonymous function and it will be executed uh, concurrently. So let's try again. Oh, we're still not getting anywhere. Mm. I don't really understand why it is it is so, but uh, <coughs> we could do something like this then. So So we specify the address. And put it into a separate go routine. It should work. Ah, oh, yeah, we should recompile it. Yeah, it works. <coughs> yeah, so we get everything. Um, So we can delete it, the debug print then. So we receive the hello world, and then we need to know where to where to connect to actually. So let's add this. Uh, it would be also address, but we will make a client this. So it would be. Uh, Web socket client it would be a web socket call no client new client and it wants a config file but maybe okay so what's the config then so location mm. I think that we can almost certainly uh, leave everything except the location uh, to be empty. So location would be this address. And uh, then we need um, read write closer 
for some reason. Uh, what's no? We probably should use dial instead because uh, this is uh, yeah. We need to use dial, but I don't really understand why it doesn't show us. Uh, okay, so dial, yeah, dial, URL would be this address, protocol would be WebSocket, and origin would be empty. So it should return error as well. So it would be our connection and error. If error is not nil, then we will return false. So it would be boolean. Mm, couldn't dial, and uh, it would be a, an error. <coughs> we could return error as well, just plain error. So, and here we say that if error is not nil, then I would print it. And that's it. So let's try. Build failed. And because we don't use uh, this C, so we would write something there. It would be so. It should be the protocol itself. So our protocol is that uh, we uh, send the first. Um, First request type would be the string of uh, what type we use, and then it would be the message on the second uh, line. So it would be something like uh, yeah, something like this would be. <coughs> Sorry. So it would be something like this. We don't really care. So let's try. Missing protocol scheme. Um, it would be HTTP, of course. And for now, it would be uh, actually. It is what should be specified in the config file, so we should specify that it's localhost here in test config. Empty URL. So for the origin, we could use the same, for example, then. Pulse empty URL. It can't parse the request URI for origin. Oh, so it's a uh, URI then. Okay, so origin would be then this thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so be web socket then and bad status. So the thing is that we don't listen in a web socket uh, everywhere. We only listen on events, so that's where should th that's where we should connect. So let's try this. Okay, so we we got something. 
And uh, for now, I will just uh, spawn another go routine that will uh, only read uh, from um, so we'll actually just copy the connection to um, std out. So we will see everything that is output. Yeah, it should be okay. Should compile. Uh, at least I think so. Yeah. So we should uh, go build and or even just go run. Okay, so we should probably yeah use go build then. Go build uh, and uh, yeah, we don't get anything from the server. Uh, but um, yeah, we didn't wait for a response to come, so let's do this as well. So don't close the connection so we should yeah this is an authentication error um, yeah see it's an error you can't authenticate and uh, we can't authenticate because we didn't send uh, the uh, proper cookies and um, the cookie would be ID and we should uh, create a session uh, with uh, some information and return and get an ID for that so when we dial uh, when we dial we can't specify cookies So, actually, uh, the client would be uh, would uh, need to be done with the config um, as well. And so we will have headers, and uh, in our headers we need to pass. Uh, uh, cookies. So we, uh, I'm not sure if we need to do this ourselves, but probably we could try. So it is a new config, and uh, <coughs> uh, so. Yeah, we uh, we just shortcut it to a new config. So let's do this instead. So we do the dial config, and uh, the config would be socket new config. That would be the same, probably, a protocol is not needed, so it's the same as we, if we would uh, specify here, and uh, um, we add a header with a cookie. Uh, to our headers and I'm sure that header 
So there would be headers, yes. And we add, but uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, there should be something uh, with cookies as well that we don't need to implement it ourselves. So, um, because uh, as always, I didn't uh, do any preparation for that, so I don't know uh, where to search for that, so it would be HTTP and actually cookie, cookie jar. So, cookie jar, uh, set cookies, so it should be some somewhere here. Uh, with uh, headers, uh, there should be. Okay, I don't know. So let's see. Go link header set cookie. Uh, So we need set cookie then. It's a set cookie header to provide it. Response writer headers. Write cookie must have a valid name. So I'm not sure if uh, our connection implements this. Uh, it should. Maybe not. So, uh, we could do manufacture the cookie as well. So, Uh, yeah, they don't want to uh, to tell us uh, the raw headers, and that's why we will need to do it ourselves. Uh, yeah, I know it's a, uh, not a proper way of doing this, but uh, we're doing this for a test. So let's see. Um, this network request would uh, need to show us the cookies somewhere. Oh, yeah, uh, I should use Chrome probably. It should be down. So network requests would be here. Events and uh, what about uh, request headers? So yeah, we just uh, add a header uh, that's called cookie. So <coughs> it's not really. It's not that uh, sophisticated, so it would be ID equals, and then we need to create session, obviously, uh, with some information. And before that, uh, we need to get this information. Uh, the information that we have uh, contains user ID and name, but uh, we actually need to have the user as well. So uh, we need to register him. And uh, that is one of uh, the parts of uh, our test. So we need to register a new user. So it would be process register or something. Register. 
the register handler and the register handler would uh, then uh, handle their re registration for us and what we really need to do is uh, to uh, <coughs> sorry to extract this part to a different method and so uh, it would be register user and uh, all that uh, we need here would be email user password name all the that's our strings and if error occurred then uh, it should be printed uh, it should be printed here so if error equals register user and email user password and name and there is not nil then it has already been logged then uh, we should just write about it uh, to our web um, web server and here we see that uh, we can have an error already exi already exists error and it will it, it is not an error it's just uh, already exists so we would do something like this so it would return error and uh, bool so <coughs> names indicate uh, what's happening here so we should say that it's not an error it's just a duplicate return otherwise we just return without any arguments so yeah uh, the ID doesn't like such big files and uh, is good <laughs> actually so okay it would be then something like this error and duplicate so if error is not nil else if duplicate and we should say that uh, sorry user already exists and uh, otherwise it would be a success okay so the main thing is that uh, we uh, detached uh, the Im implementation of uh, our internal uh, API to register user from the web handler and now we can use it in a test so we would register a new user and uh, for that we would need to create an email password and uh, name and so we will have to do two requests one of uh, them would be uh, the uh, request to get a session token and another one would be uh, to connect to the events handler so okay so we will need to simulate that we actually click this login button and uh, then we will uh, get uh, some cookies uh, and uh, these cookies will be used to, uh, for authentication but uh, even without it 
we can start with just creating a session and specifying it. Okay, so we need to register user first. Okay, so email would be something like test at uh, example org, and we should add uh, some unique name here. So it would be something like this. Uh, it would be time now. Time now Unix. So it would be test and uh, current timestamp. It's our email, and uh, we need a name <coughs> that would be equal to email in our case, or even we could say that it would be a name, and email would be name and example.org. And user password would be test. So error and duplicate. So email test. We'll declare the password here. Email test password and username and uh, in any case say if it is duplicate or if it is an actual error then we should uh, do something about it. Okay, so uh, we have registered our user, then we need to create a session. So it would be session info and uh, fields would be ID which is user ID of course. And name. So user ID uh, would need to be returned probably. Uh, we don't know the user ID so we will need to actually try to log in. And instead of doing register user, we could do something else as well. So we need to test login as well. So login would be then so uh, login. We could see our handlers, the login handler. Okay, so it's. Uh, Uh, it does uh, mix the logging of errors and uh, business logic, but that's okay. So <coughs> uh, we'll need to. to mock the request here probably or not. Okay, so we can do something like this. We extract this part. Say it's uh, something like login user. And it needs email and uh, user password of course so to return error um, so 
so it would return error and in case of db error it will be logged as well so it doesn't matter for us uh, that uh, or even error and string so <coughs> string would be uh, a description of uh, uh, of an error. No, <laughs> it sounds terrible. So it would be an error, and that's all. Session ID, of course. So it would be uh, session ID is uh, string. Okay, so session ID. string and error. Okay, so if it's not nil, then uh, uh, we would say that uh, we just return this. Um, so we'll log in user and email and password and then if error is sql no rows or um, if not nil as if uh, if error is not nil, then uh, uh, we should not yeah, we should not uh, expose this. So if it is an SQL no rows, then if it's not a SQL no rows, then we uh, just log this error and that's all. Look this error and uh, report something else. But otherwise, we say that it is not registered error. Otherwise, we say that. It's either incorrect passwords or we couldn't create session. So, yeah. So it would be session ID and error. And if error is not nil, then we just return. Otherwise, we're good. And we got uh, working uh, working session. <coughs> And create session should log uh, should log errors probably as well. So it would be couldn't create session and the error. So we extracted the code to perform the uh, user login as well. So now we return to our test. And uh, so we do the same. So session ID in there would be login user. Email and uh, user password would be 
the password that we registered user with and if error is not nil then return it otherwise we got the session ID which is string and we add it to the cookies that's it so actually we should do escape string <coughs> it's not HTML actually so yeah we'll leave it for now but uh, we need to do the encoding uh, the URL encoding uh, here so it is probably located somewhere else in Go okay so we are probably ready to try it again okay so line 274 uh, errors new yeah so Okay, so we received something. We received several messages, actually, so... So, yes, uh, in uh, the response protocol, we don't get uh, anything, basically. Uh, and then we need to read message here it reads data from a frame uh, and we need to get a, something like a JSON reader But uh, uh, in this case, it uh, yeah, it should be something like JSON reader. So I don't remember where I used it already. So. Okay, it would be JSON, new reader, new decoder from a connection <coughs> and we will mm, we'll unmarshal this uh, to into value that uh, is uh, just map of string to interface because uh, we don't know the uh, type uh, when we decode the message so it would be pretty strange to see this but we'll try to do something and we should uh, put a uh, carriage return here as well so yes um, we get a map to interface and uh, what is interesting here is that we could then convert it to the response type that we want uh, if we uh, remove the type field and uh, mm, do the JSON encode and decode um, okay so uh, what we 
would expect to get then is uh, that even without anything uh, we should uh, we need to receive two messages yes uh, it is uh, an online user list and uh, user connected and uh, of course n no one is connected and uh, Uh, we should see nothing because uh, it's a different uh, application instance but we could log in there if we want so let's try this um, we have 10 seconds to do this it's probably not enough uh, yeah, you see it works and uh, even our test user is online. It should go offline soon enough. Or actually it has gone offline already. But not, not it has gone offline, but we have gone offline because nothing is uh, running now. If we try to relaunch it, then it will reconnect, but the old online user is still present. We didn't clean it, but it's not online actually. So, uh, as you can see, when we do initial connection, we don't receive. We receive it. Okay, so let's try to do something about this. Uh, what do we need to uh, to check anyway? So we have a for loop that uh, receives messages and we would uh, first expect to get uh, the online user list and uh, user connected and we don't really care about these events. We just uh, uh, need to know whether or not uh, it happened. So we could uh, make some channels for communication with our main routine. So uh, there are status messages and uh, actual response to <coughs> a request. And if we have a response to a request, then uh, It should be in some form. So we should flush or something. Okay, we'll we'll go there eventually. So uh, what we need to do is to make a channel of bulls that we had uh, now that we had uh, uh, online users list would be channel with capacity of one and had a user connected mm. Actually, we don't get. Uh, oh no, we we do. So we get ourselves. Always we get ourselves. So had user connected. User connected would be bull channel as well. So if we. value type uh, string would be okay so we switch value type we know that is string so we type cast it <coughs> and we get uh, event online list 
then we set flag and by flag I mean the uh, chain of bulls so we just do the very simple thing that we send true there and uh, if it blocks then we do nothing and uh, have flag would be the same thing so we try to receive on channel in this case we return true otherwise we don't do anything and so return false and uh, we will do then set flag for head online users list and for event user connected we'll set flag about uh, head user connected and so uh, for default we'll send just uh, a response <coughs> to a request so it would be chain of uh, this type it would be a one as well okay so yeah, it should be carriage return twice and for test we would make another file so that we don't spoil the main one uh, so new file would be something like that so func test go yeah package main we'll need a lot of imports here so time of course Web sockets, format, errors, JSON. Yeah, that's all, but uh, a lot. Imports and some imports will be common used here. So we'll, we'll have to see. Okay, so let's try to to build it. So on line 23 we have too many arguments to return that's because uh, it returns something um, yeah, that's good so we don't have any unused imports um, yeah we need to do request get messages and uh, it should return something Probably that's there was an error. But maybe not. I don't really get uh, whether or not we sent the event or not. So we should have at least. C right close. Right, request, read. Handle frame, header reader. Close. So we don't have uh, anything like uh, like flush. So let's add a debug. Uh, into the application itself so we should say that uh, we got a new connection of course 
and uh, then so <laughs> am I setting something incorrectly so probably request would look like this then Oh, that's a lot. Don't really understand why it spams. So many messages. It's very strange that it uh, and so <laughs> let's try again yeah we get a lot of uh, messages mm. from uh, the server and that's not what I expected so let's see do we really have so many events so it said that uh, user connected user connected user connected that's all it was it's very strange. And let's try to to look into the real application. Then, uh, is it spamming events? And so we can see the frames here. And uh, not much was sent, so it's what uh, it's what we received, and what the reply was. Okay, so maybe uh, we have another one active. I don't know. Uh, no, it's still still working. It doesn't show us a lot. Okay, get users list one, and quest get timeline zero. Oh yeah, and we have sequence ID here. <coughs> okay, so it would be sequence ID zero. And we actually have found a bug here. That's if we get an incorrect protocol, then uh, it begins to spam the answers. So yeah, see. No, I don't get it. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't finish it. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, you see, if we form the header incorrectly, then it begins to uh, to spam messages, and it's not uh, what we want at all. So, let's see. So navigate symbol uh router <laughs> no it's uh events handler events handler yeah here it is so um, we defer the 
shift close okay so we return here if event is nil then we just return how is it possible that we just send it a lot of events then I don't really understand so we send receive channel here <clears throat> uh, it would be something like user disconnected and we even know who who it is so turn for name it's connected and uh, let's see and so we should stop printing this for for a moment and even stop receiving messages as well so we could actually just add a slip and uh, to prevent us receiving so many events and uh, it would be good okay so user disconnected immediately because uh, it's invalid syntax and we didn't handle it correctly as it turns out so why why is it happening uh, we close the web socket and we send nil to a receive channel yeah it should just return and uh, what we do instead is uh, send a control event and uh, we read from there somewhere so we should read from events flow yeah here is where we read It's not actually. It's actually the incorrect way to check the capacity because uh, if several writers are going to write into the same channel, it will still block. We just uh, should write it this way, and ignore the default okay so we saw the events dispatcher but uh, I don't really understand where uh, where it comes from because uh, when user disconnects we shouldn't send uh, a lot of events there and uh, somehow we do so mm. Yeah, and this is uh, where we read the user requests and uh, uh, if event is nil then we should just return otherwise we should send uh, the event that we received to to the uh, client so what we will do here is uh, just to make sure that mm, we are really trying to send a lot of uh, uh, messages I'll add a debug here send message Okay, so let's let's do it. Oh yeah, we have a panic. Let's run test. Interface is nil, not string. Trying to save send message base event on line user list. And uh, in 
functional test we have uh, oh really okay so <clears throat> type okay mes message type and so uh, okay <laughs> uh, would be this thing and if uh, the message type is uh, string then we do this switch otherwise we we do nothing. So we just print this message. That's all. Okay. So let's try again. So we receive the same event over and over again, even though um, we didn't. Uh, send it here so we just uh, received it once and that's all oh yeah <laughs> we don't have an error in our server as it turns out everything is okay here on the server side uh, decode can return an error and we ignored it so And decode value, and that's the answer. So, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty easy. So, we didn't have an error here, we had an error no, not in our server but in our test. We didn't check for an error on decode. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, it, uh, it couldn't decode value because uh, it uses uh, closed network connection. And uh, it uses closed network connection because, uh, you know, uh, because we sent a bad uh, request and uh, the sequence ID is not in here uh, we just close connection and uh, yeah that's not really helping but we have uh, uh, it's uh, on the ser in the same console, so we see this error. Okay, um, we need a sequence ID here specified, so it would be okay zero, and it should uh, then send the response for yeah, see sequence ID zero. Should it sent a response for our request and it's a reply er error? <coughs> mm. So we should receive a response here and uh, with the And um, yeah, we could stop printing this and sleeping as well. Uh, and uh, just see that uh, uh, see that the response that we printed is the same that we got through a channel. Yeah, 
yeah we see that uh, the resp prefix is here received a message and type reply error so it's not the correct one uh, so we we should have received another one but uh, okay so if uh, response response type uh, is not uh, reply get messages uh, it's not reply get messages it's uh, it's different it's reply messages list so it's what we get what we should get at least so we say that it's an invalid response and return error would be format error f and we could actually format an error this way okay so we didn't get reply messages list and otherwise we do this uh, interesting thing that uh, we okay so we actually should check the sequence ID that it's not nil and uh, it is of type int yeah okay so it is uh, something like this int not equal zero then invalid sequence ID <coughs> Otherwise, uh, we could use this trick uh, to do a double um, JSON encode and decode to get a properly proper reply. So let's try to do this JSON decode. Unmarshal. Uh, Unmarshal results of JSON encode. Marshal, of course. Marshall, uh, our map and response would be the row response, of course. And marshal this data. We shouldn't have any problems with marshalling this, so I ignore the error uh, here in test you should never ignore errors in real code okay so uh, we try to unmarshal into the reply and reply would be <coughs> response reply messages messages okay. you see that we have inconsistent naming of uh, the strings and uh, data types this should be also avoided but okay so let's try to do this we should then sorry uh, so we should then just print it to ensure that everything is okay and that's it so we don't need to do anything as well anything else here okay so we didn't uh, get a proper response because uh, of course we didn't supply a limit that's what we're going to do here we'll use different types of codes uh, here as well mm, so that we can form a good JSON string okay so
limit zero is a pretty strange thing. <laughs> okay, limit zero shouldn't work actually, but uh, somehow we didn't get any anything. Okay, let's uncomment this <laughs> then and see what what's going on. Okay, so it's it does nothing. That's strange. Okay, process get messages. So limit must be greater than zero. Okay, can I select messages? It should be re reply messages list. Yeah, I see the problem is here probably. That we didn't send any error. <coughs> Let's try again. Yeah, we just don't get any response. It's strange. So let's see if we actually try to send anything. So it would be a reply then. Uh, log printf. And did we enter? Of course we did. We couldn't. Uh, I couldn't do otherwise. Okay, so we don't have any reply yet. So, yeah. Let's see. We didn't enter process get messages at all. What's going on? So nothing is happening because we didn't send a request. That's strange. Okay, so what's wrong? Ah, okay, so in uh, this type of codes, uh, the all characters are actually interpret it as is. So backslash n no longer means uh, carry to um, new line. So you should enter either new line or do th something else. Yeah, okay, so we get panic. At least something works. So interface connection, oh, okay, it's full 64. I uh, see it's not full at sixty four. But okay. Let it be full at sixty four. So we have no messages of course. But uh we did uh receive a reply of messages list. So that's that's very good. Sadly, we don't have much time left. Uh, even I would say that we don't have any time. So let's, let's remove the debug. Uh, and uh, that's it. We're all. Uh, 
some kind of test that verifies that uh, uh, the registration works that authorization and authentication uh, works that it all uh, uh, does work through WebSocket uh, so we tested the main protocol we didn't test the HTTP sir so we just uh, tested the protocol itself uh, we didn't check that uh, we received user online and user connected so let's let's use it uh, if <coughs> not head flag have flag uh, then didn't receive uh, online users list and if we didn't have a flag had user connected and receive user connected so we should try try it yeah but uh, let's let's ensure that if we don't write there we get an error and yes we we do check it so that was our first functional test that was embedded into an application we could probably uh, make it a proper test uh, sometime in the future but uh, for now it is just uh, uh, a small self-check and we should have registered a lot of users actually as you can see and uh, this is one of the reasons why we should u probably use another instance of uh, MySQL to do this and uh, next part we will probably uh, try to do something about this for now we have a lot of users and uh, we will see that uh, <coughs> a lot of things are different now so in users list we have a lot of test users friends messages we don't have anything but I think that oh yeah in messages we only see online so hi Safari and Safari should see a message from Chrome yeah it should respond hello and sadly there <laughs> we don't see a response but okay so we should fix this as well and uh, write a proper test that uh, receive all the events and that we draw them if they are received uh, by a server but we will do it next time so thank you uh, for watching and uh, see you next time